how does this fix it? This is a Sphero SPRK Plus and its battery is dying. And like all Sphero's, once the battery goes, it's completely useless. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up and change the two batteries that are inside. Now I've seen a few videos <laughs> that suggests that you take a hacksaw or some other saw to this shell to get it open but I think that's rubbish so I'm just going to open it in such a way that I can get in there change the batteries and glue it back together and have a near on perfect sphero so stick with me so I've now opened the body um, and as you can see it's opened in a way that can be glued together there's actually very little damage to it and it's just opening up there so what I'll do is I'll now open that up a bit wider and take out the sphero so let's take this out of here and the easiest way is just to rotate the ball around until the heavy end is around the other side and then to gently crack an egg and let the sphero out and now what you need to do is to remove these top wheels and they should just pull off and put them to one side and then you've actually got two screws that you need to remove careful with the screws you don't want the screws accidentally touching the printed circuit board and these components because the battery even though it's dead ish is still live so be very very careful removing these let's just take that screw off okay so that's the two screws removed so now underneath here there's a series of clips that go through the board so what i need to do is to take the blunt end of this device and to slot it under there and gently push up now move around you can see there's some pins here that aren't actually connected to anything again gently push up move around gently push up and you can see deep inside this four and the four in there are actually associated with the battery so i'm actually going to come inside there and i'm just going to twist move around again twist and twist them off and there you have it so that's the brains behind the operation and this is the motor and the main part on the bottom here this big heavy object is actually the charging coil so what i need to do now is just to remove this here so let's just push that up out of the way and use my splodger again be gentle doing this though because underneath you is a lipo battery which is a very dangerous battery so go right the way through and then twist up use something plastic And there are the batteries and as you can see these batteries are extremely swollen this is what happens when lipo batteries go they swell up full of gas like this the thing is do not under any circumstances pierce these either by accident or by design if you do they are likely to burst into flames okay so be extremely careful with them and these batteries are actually connected to this part here so let me just prise this up okay so just take that off there and then if we tip the batteries out you'll see that this lot comes off all together so that's what it looks like those are extremely dangerous those batteries I've never seen any batteries so exploded that's bizarre look at the gas in there and so basically what we have here is um, we have six holes in this block but actually if you turn it over we can see that only four are filled and two are the positive and negative from one battery and two are the positive and negative from the other so in this case we've got red is the positive and white is the negative on that battery and on this other one blue is the positive black is the negative so you can see that the blue and the red go together and the black and the white go together 
the next job is to trim these now what you don't want to do is to just cut straight the way across there because if you do you'll short out this battery and risk a fire so what you need to do is to separate these wires and then as close to the bottom as possible clip one here and clip the other one a bit further up there the reason for doing that is you want to make sure that these two don't accidentally touch each other so make them a couple of millimeters apart and this is the bit that you're actually going to transpose onto the next battery if you actually cut it up here when you try to get the leads in for your new battery you're going to have a big problem and in fact that's exactly what i did in a previous one and had a hell of a job getting this thing back in place so that's what we want to do we want to cut this down here cut the positive first and cut the positive low down okay make sure you don't cut the negative at the same time to say because otherwise you'll short out the battery and given that this one is so swollen it could explode so cut that there low down pull it away and cut the other one a little bit higher that's one battery done let's do the same with this other battery all right so i'm going to cut this one positive very low down make sure it's out of the way and then cut the negative a little bit higher up so the two can't touch each other the replacement parts you need to do this and they're available on ebay and other places is this number so it's a 3.7 volts it's 350 milliamp hours and it's 1.3 watt hours and the number is 70 20 35 there's another number here as well but i haven't been able to find that anywhere which is 151208-13s but as i said i haven't managed to find that anywhere but i have found this number the 70 20 35 and you can order these online they're about three pounds each i don't actually have any of these so what i've done is i've used a, a different battery which is um, 400 milliwatt hours which will give me slightly longer and um, i'll show you what i've used so the battery i'm using is a 70 20 30 3.7 volts at 400 milliamp hours it's a slight increase and it may well be that the charger can't charge it up to 400 milliamp hours but hopefully because it's a higher milliamp average um, it'll be fine so that's what i'm going to use so the job then is to solder these wires onto this so red and white on the red and black there and on another one it'll be the blue on the on the red and the black on the black so there are two batteries okay so before i put the rest of the wheels and everything on there i'm just going to stick this back on the charger and see whether or not it lights up and works it was asleep so let me just press the button on the side and wake it up fantastic it's working so now i can put it back together and put the wheels on and give it a road test so now we know it works what i need to do now is to very carefully put the screws back in i find a good way to do it is to take the screw and put your finger on it to guide it into place to make sure it doesn't slip away okay so let's just get that one in partially to start with and let's get the other one in again screw supported by the finger okay now i can turn it on its side and screw them up Screw that down tight, but not too tight. Okay. And now what we want to do is to put these wheels back on and just dip them underneath there, which is the aerial. Don't push too hard though, because otherwise you'll damage the aerial. And this basically it needs to make sure that it slots on that pillow at either end okay and here's the ball but i've actually got 
another broken one which I had which is virtually like new so I'm actually going to transplant him into this one like that and then I'm going to put that back on the charger now in the ball before I glue the ball back together <laughs> 